be able to perform for you this evening. Um, as you can see on the program and by all the people sitting on the stage, we will begin with the band um, and have a short pause to reset up for, for the choir on the second part. Um, so I'll just a couple things to remind you if you haven't already turned off your phones or any other electronic devices. We have a lovely uh, video made of the concert, which you'll be able to find on YouTube in a few days. So you don't have to worry about that I get a good picture of that or whatever. Sit back and relax. Enjoy the concert. Thank you again. George Gershwin, 
was composed in 1924, and it was composed for solo piano and jazz band. And um, he composed it as, a, as wanting it to be a kaleidoscope of America, of the vast melting pot, the unduplicated national pep, and the metropolitan madness that he saw around him. And actually premiered at a concert that was entitled An Experiment in Modern Music. And um, the music that was selected for that concert was supposed to show the rhythm and harmony and melodies of the time and the restlessness of the age in the 1920s and 1930s. But as it's come about, the opening uh, glissando in this piece
playing for you this evening is titled Benediction by um, John Stevens. It was originally written for a tuba euphonium quartet, a very well-known group that um, all four of the students actually were, or all four of the members of the group were actually former students at University of Wisconsin-Madison. And the director of bands there kind of encouraged the composer to transcribe it for band and it was dedicated to him. And it's originally written as a, a, a big sonorous vocal amen. So it's a, a beautiful, relaxing piece for you after the hubbub of Rhapsody in Blue. And um, since benediction does mean bestowing of a blessing, we hope that we bestow a blessing to you tonight with our performance of benediction. <coughs>
guess already, it's going to be pretty lively. It was written in celebration of sandhill cranes that come to Monte Vista, Colorado every year. And they even have a crane festival every March in Monte Vista, Colorado, because these cranes have been taking a spring break from their migration in this area for over 2,000 years. So when the sandhill cranes um, gather here, they have quite an elaborate ritual for mating and courtship. And they will bow and they'll flap their wings and they leap and twirl in the air and do all kinds of things like rhythmic gymnastics. So this piece is written in celebration of their movements and the things they do in their elaborate courtship ritual. So if you feel like getting up and dancing, you will understand, but do it. Thank you. 
you want to go to Montevista, Colorado, doesn't it? <laughs> see those sand hill creeks? If you come out to Lake Blackshear, you can see a few. They're not like that. Though. We haven't seen them do all that. <laughs> Might be worth a trip to Montevista. All right, our next piece for you will be a little more um, on the chill side. Um, Pink Panther, written by Henry Mancini. He wrote it in 1963 to go along with the film, The Pink Panther. And what I found interesting, do any of you, if you know that cute little pink cat cartoon that's associated with Pink Panther, and it was evidently played at the beginning when they rolled the credits in the film. Well, Henry Mancini actually wrote this piece to go along with the cat's movements. So all his accents were written in to accentuate what the cat did at the trailer at the front of the movie. So if you remember that, just play it through your hand while we're playing it for you. <laughs> you need to call your new march. 
Coincidentally, the very next day, Sousa received a letter in the mail from his wife, and she had written to tell Sousa that their son had played in his first parade, celebrating the Liberty Bell. So that's how this tune got its name, the Liberty Bell. And as a matter of fact, this is the first, I think, piece of music that um, Sousa really got some um, financial uh, reimbursement for, or financial compensation for. So Liberty Bell, enjoy. <laughs>
African-American composers. Aaron Copeland wrote uh, choral old American songs originally in 1950 as a solo with piano. Uh, and then they've been set many times for in different arrangements, choral, band. Uh, and then this choral suite arranged by uh, Joe Clefford Day has three of the old American songs. Zion's Walls, The Little Horses, I Bought Me a Cat.
Oh, <laughs> 